Are you serious? I'm under attack. What are you doing? Go. You can see that I'm not winning this battle. They actually sound a lot like the people on the water slide over there. I want to welcome all of you back to my golf DNA. Today's going to be a good day. Even the birds are excited to be here today, and hopefully you are as well. I'm excited to have you guys back. Today is going to be a big, big day for all of us. We, you and I, mano y mano, are going to go on a journey, and we're going to answer two very important questions when it comes to you and your golf swing. Number one, when is my backswing complete? Number two, how and when should I start my downswing? We're going to answer both those questions, but more importantly, I'm going to show you a simple drill that helps you put it all together, that puts your golf swing back in movement, gets you unlocked, and helps you do a lot of things that your golf swing is probably lacking, like good sequence, proper preservation of lag, all of the things. And you're going to be able to blow it past all your friends. You ready? Because I'm ready. They're ready. <laughs> Let's get to work. Your body, if you use it the proper way, is this big system. And your job is not to load and hold muscle tension. Your job is to load and fire muscles in a very specific order so that you can create club head speed. So very important that you understand that most of you start the processes of a takeaway and backswing by moving from your smallest muscles in your system. You like to move the club in space with your hands and your arms. And you allow your body to start trying to play catch up. And you can get these false senses of load where the club can start pulling you over to your trail side, it can start helping you turn. And what that does is it, on camera, actually looks like a real takeaway and a real backswing. But that's the reason why I don't look at golf swings from a position standpoint. I look at the movement. And I could pick up very quickly when somebody's moving in the correct sequence. So there are some functions from the hands and the arms, both in the takeaway and the backswing, then also in the downswing. The functions that I'm gonna teach you in the backswing are more what we would consider kind of in the secondary, more in a passive state. I don't want your backswing to have really, really big, powerful hand and arm movements. That's when you're gonna start making the body shut down and you're always gonna fire from the smaller muscles when it comes to this game. Okay, just real quick, sit through this piece because I want you to understand exactly what the hands and the arms are doing on both sides of the golf ball. The functions in the takeaway and the backswing are very, very minuscule, okay? What you'll find is, is that there's going to be a small amount of arm elevation. So you can just take from a static address position and lift your lead arm straight up. This would be considered arm elevation. Then you have a little bit of trail arm flexion. Then you have a little bit of wrist and forearm rotation and a little bit of wrist set. Those functions are all considered variables. How much elevation, how much flexion, how much wrist and forearm rotation and set you have is all very player dependent. Now here at My Golf DNA, we have kind of some set parameters that we like to have our students in, but that's not ironclad across the board. In fact, arm positions come last on our agenda. We want you to get the big stuff right first because the arm stuff becomes much easier for us to manage inside of a good, good system that has really good sequence. Now, that's the takeaway in the backswing arm functions. Now, in the downswing, there's actually gonna be some arm activation that happens. If you watch really good, efficient swingers of the golf club, people that produce a lot of big speed out of the club head that don't look like they're working very hard, what you're gonna notice is, is that the hips go through this really big acceleration phase, and then they slow down. And then the body comes to this really big stalling point so that the hands and arms can become independent and start swinging through. And then the body follows into finish. Now, I know a lot of you at home are burned into this mindset that you gotta keep turning through the hitting area. You can if you want to. I'm not gonna shy you away from that, but just know that that's not a good way for you to be able to put club head speed where it matters the most down here. Okay, so just to expound a little bit more on today's drill, I'm gonna show you kind of a visual and something that you can start feeling at home first before you start trying to take this on with a golf club. So if you were to hold your lead arm out in front of you, okay, standing vertically here, and you had a wall on the outside part of your shoulder and the outside part of your forearm and hand here, okay, and you were instructed to hit that wall as hard as you possibly could, but in doing so, we don't want you to take your arm and push it across your center at any point. We want you to use your body as a system to be able to hit this wall as hard as you possibly can. How would you do that? Well, think about this. If I took my body and I shifted to my trail side and I turned my body back, okay, my arm is still not pushed across my center, and then I started changing my direction of my body, now I've got some position here where I can start hitting the wall pretty hard. Now, I want you to think about this a little bit further. If you're doing that fast and you're keeping your tension levels down, 
and you are on your way back and you're starting to change the direction with your legs and your hips, what's gonna happen to your lead arm? Well, your lead arm is gonna continue to go back this way, which is gonna start forcing you to get some stretch up here in your deltoids. It's gonna start getting you to feel some stretch right here in the upper part of your pec. Those are muscles that are okay to use in the golf swing. Those muscles, now that they're loaded in the correct sequence, are gonna to wanna to fire in the correct sequence. And so as your body starts moving back to the lead side in that acceleration phase, now your arm is ready to be swung off of the shoulder with a whole lot more zip. We're ready for business. Now you wanna know how to practice this stuff. Okay, you understand the whole wall visual, you understand the stretch, you understand when it's supposed to happen. Now let's get the golf clubs out and let's start practicing it for real. So we're gonna take our setup, we're gonna have our trail arm behind our back. We're gonna have our lead arm hanging down freely underneath our shoulders. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna do exactly what I taught you in the dynamic load video, is we're gonna make a little pressure shift onto our trail side, and we're gonna take our guts and our rib cage, and we're gonna turn them as much as we possibly can. Now when you do this, I just want you to keep the lead arm and lead shoulder as relaxed as you possibly can. And I want you to do maybe three or four or five reps or so, just thinking about pressure shift and body turn. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and shift and turn and you're gonna stop your arm from moving when you can't turn anymore. Notice how short my arm is. It's not even parallel to the ground. A lot of you at home are like, that's when the backswing is complete? Well, yeah, but remember, there's also going to be some arm functions that actually take place. So we're gonna take our setup, we're gonna pressure shift and turn our ribs and stop our arm when we can't move anymore. Okay, pressure shift, turn okay now when we start moving into this second piece we're not going to stop we're actually going to make a real swing happen here but what we're going to feel is is that as our guts and our rib cage get fully turned our arm is going to feel like it's now elevating just like i demonstrated at the start of the video you want to feel like that arm is elevating as you're getting your guts fully wound up here what you're gonna find is, is that because you're loading your body up in the correct order, you're now gonna start moving in the correct sequence. If you load the body up in the correct sequence and your arms are doing very little in this thing, then you're gonna find that it's very hard for you to have bad downswing sequence. So how we're gonna do it now is we're gonna think about making that big turn and that shift onto our trail side. But as we finish our turn, we're gonna feel our arm moving vertically. And we're gonna make our swing through without any sort of stopping point. So we're gonna do two or three reps. Trail hand behind the back, pressure shift, turn the guts, arm up. Okay. Pressure shift, turn my guts, arm up. Okay. So you can see that the arm is still going this way as my legs and my hips are starting to change the direction here. That change of direction is starting to get me to feel loaded here in the shoulder and in the chest, and that's turning into an acceleration of my arm smashing through that wall. Okay, pressure shift, turn the guts, arm up. Okay, you can see that I really have some speed there, right? Pressure shift, turn the guts. Okay, now you've got it in your brain, pick up a golf club, bring it back in. Don't take a lot of time here, right? You've just created awareness, you know what you're feeling, your feels are gonna be different than anybody, any person that's out there. Pick up a golf club and remember what your objective here is. You're gonna be pressure shifting, turning your guts, feeling the hands and arms move vertically at the very end of your big turn here, okay? Let's do two good reps here. Okay. Okay, then hit a golf ball. Feeling the same thing. So let's do one more set. So you just went through that whole protocol. Let's just do one more together so you can see exactly how I would practice things. Take your setup. I'm gonna have the club here available to me because I'm gonna move through this pretty quickly. Okay, arms hanging here freely. Okay, I'm just gonna do one or two reps, pressure shifting and just turning my guts, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna do a couple reps where I put it together. Okay, club comes back in. I'm staying committed to feeling and seeing those same things in my brain. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna hit a shot. Whew. So there you have it, folks. That right there is a drill for anybody. It's a drill that can help you no matter where you're at with your game. If you find that your timing or your sequence is just way out of place, then go focus on moving in the big areas of the body. Create the feed that your brain needs to have in order to be able to move in the correct order. Allow the arms and the shoulders, the functions that they have, to feel very late in the process. And you're gonna get out there and you're gonna start finding that all of your speed comes back or speed that you never had in the first place starts to get unlocked and you're gonna be a much happier person. Let's get out there, let's play some great golf. Good luck, make it a great day.